Hey there YouTube, I'm Yukitsu, this is the Yukitsu Times, welcome to my channel, welcome to our Tuesday tutorial. So, um, I've been playing this game and there's been an annoying strategy that uh, people have been playing out, and I think that it probably started off with the fascist side because they're a little bit better at the strategy, but since the counter to the strategy is to use this strategy, um, it's been proliferating I think to the allies, and I think that's the direction it probably went because I think the allies are a little bit weaker at the strategy personally. Um, and what basically this is, is people just take a whole crap ton of anti-infantry spam vehicles and just charge across an open field at them across one or two sides, uh, very narrow fronts, and just sort of rush forward and hope that they can overwhelm anything in that very, very narrow sort of area there. So we're going to go ahead and skip forward as fast as we can. Now I'm playing as the Canadians, and the Canadians, A, are very, very bad at the strategy unless they can use two rams, one on each side and predict exactly where the enemy is going to be pushing their vehicles forward, because if they're able to do that, then the entire column just gets fucked by rams. Uh, the only exception to this is if you're up against the SS Panzer Grenadiers, who could potentially have the Butte Firefly, and the Butte Firefly could of course just kill your rams. So there is that. There's also the fact that it's 280 points for two rams. That's a lot of points. But what I'm doing instead is I've uh, taken a decent number of um, anti-tank guns. I've got three on the right slash center, capable of firing down this corridor, which is the much larger and more open area, so my opponent is quite likely to take that. Uh, he has actually got STKFZ half-tracks with some uh, scouts and stuff like that, so it's not as though he's banking everything on this armor push, but you can see over here that he's decided to stack up um, a whole bunch of these uh, Pumas and uh, ha other half track sort of things here. And these things are very, very good at just pushing through a location. And what he's planning to do is just move these guys up to like the 50% line um, and have his infantry sit at the 50% line. And a German rifle unit is perfectly capable of uh, just sitting at a 50% line and being fine. All of this crap is just going to try and come swooping down this uh, this flank over here and try and uh, bully its way straight through my lines there. Now I've actually taken an anti-tank gun, but I've also taken two command infantry, both of them with piets, which are both capable in these sort of cramped conditions to uh, defeat this. Now my opponent could have opted to charge down this lane, um, knowing that his tanks would be more effective out in the open, but it's also less likely to um, be undefended in terms of anti-tank stuff, having long sight lines and stuff like that for my anti-tank weaponry. So the um, throwdown is going to come down on this side here. I've got a Bedford that's going to clash with these guys. I think I end up uh, losing that one, but I don't really care because it's not like riflemen are going to be able to do anything in this situation. But we sort of pop out over here with our command carriers. They're able to sort of pop out um, fairly close range combat against SDKF Zeds and stuff like that. And uh, we've got ourselves our uh, six pounder that's sort of popped up here. Over here, uh, one of our rifle leaders has unfortunately basically just immediately quit. Um, that's fine, doesn't really matter tremendously, but he's going to move forward into towards the six pounder here, and it's going to start firing away at uh, a whole bunch of these units here. And it takes out one of the SDKFZs. Uh, one of them actually, I think, got killed over here by the uh, rifles. Uh, commanders and uh, the rifle commanders over here are then able to take out this SPW. Um, if I recall, or they fall it back and then it sort of has to go towards its side, so it ends up uh, surrendering. Over here, my six pounder is surrendered, um, but my opponent at this point already surrenders there because uh, he just lost something like 400 points worth of stuff in that very, very brief joust, meaning that he could not really contest, especially because there was nothing behind that, meaning I could have just rolled forward a huge amount of terrain. Um, and since he was losing in the early game as the Germans, he can't come back from that since he didn't kill enough stuff, since I could have reinforced with another six pounder on that side, and since I still had a command infantry over there, he couldn't really do anything. Um, and he just audited, added, um, opted to exit out there right now. So I'm gonna show you uh, another video from the other perspective, me playing as the Germans, and showing you again, it's a similar sort of thing, but I'm gonna be showing you that you don't have to use this with the Germans. Now, why do I think that people are using with this as Germans? Well, we'll Take a look actually at their sort of uh, units and take maybe a guess as to why we're seeing this from, I think, them in particular. And why I think as well they're also better at this than the Allies, because the Allies really aren't anywhere near as good at the strategy we're going to see uh, later. Sure. Let's go ahead and hit back here. And let's take a look at the Axis factions over here. So we were up against the Panzer Lair in this case. I accidentally used uh, the wrong faction when I played to sort of demonstrate this. But um, what we see here, well, uh, we've got... Uh, I don't actually use this Rush, so I don't have that. But they've got things like the Puma. And the Puma, despite having particularly not great 
uh, armor attributes, if you've pushed up a whole bunch of other tanks in front of it, this thing can joust with other tanks in the early game extremely effectively and often beat them. 10 armor penetration is good enough to beat anything in phase A that the allies could really put out. Um, even the ram, if you get close enough to it or get a lucky shot, you can kill it with this thing. And if you're getting hit with enough high explosives in a ram, it's going to panic and fall back anyway, giving you lots more time to kill it with a puma. Um, You've got the SPW 234 slash 1. Uh, 9 high explosive power plus the 7 from the machine gun means that this thing kills units very, very quickly, infantry units. And the reason that these things are so important is that the enemy opens up with one of their um, anti-tank guns, hopefully against a half-track that you've put, uh, put in front of the rest of your units. And that half-track doesn't matter if it gets shot and killed um, by an anti-tank gun. And if it does, then you've still got this... Uh, if, if it does, you've still got all these vehicles behind it that are able to then instantly kill that half track or that anti tank gun with all these nine explosive, uh, high explosive shells. They've also got this in the support tab for cheaper uh, STKFZ250 uh, slash eights. 45 points for each of these nine high explosive power. The reason that these are a little bit worse is because they can't easily duel with um, uh, the Humbers and stuff like that, but uh, there are also a few other situations where the four AP is actually quite nice. Um, so Basically, the Germans have these options that are vehicle-mounted and extremely good at taking out anti-tank emplacements. Um, and that combination is extremely, extremely nice. But more importantly, they're cheap. An SDKF Z250-8 is only 8 points, or 45 points. Um, and like a 45-point uh, spammable vehicle that you can just sort of drive forward into enemy tank anti-tank emplacements means that if I lose one of these and take out the anti-tank emplacement, I won. I'm, I'm winning that exchange. And if I can keep doing that until he's out of anti-tank guns, then I'm doing even better. At that point in time, I can just push forward with like a half-track or something like that and do a bunch of infantry. And those infantry might have um, an anti-tank weapon in Piat or something like that, but they might not. And if they don't, and the allies don't often have as many of those weapons, unless you're against the 101 Airborne, um, then you're basically going to be just wiping out unit after unit after unit that can't fight back against these half-tracks. And this is why you often see them doing this rush with recon half-tracks, because it lets them also spot out the infantry from a longer distance, potentially meaning that they aren't going to have to get hit by a Piat if they're going to be using this strategy. Something like the uh, SPW-233 is kind of okay. Personally, I still prefer the uh, 234-1. Um, that mix of both a high explosive weapon plus the... Uh, Armor penetration value plus the machine gun makes it really, really good at killing infantry. Use the SPW-233, uh, though, if you really need to knock out tanks while still having that uh, high explosive and also for that 1,000 range, but still, the fact it doesn't have a machine gun really kind of doesn't sit too well with me. Then, of course, uh, you got the Puma again, but realistically, it's just stacking all these uh, Phase A ones realistically, and, uh, you know, the Scout Recons as well are quite good. And then, of course, you've got a couple SDKFZs from your infantry units that you're taking to hold just the front line elsewhere so that you don't instantly get rolled, counter-rolled, basically. And, uh, yeah, this works really, really well for the uh, German faction. Let's take a quick look at their allied uh, uh, comparisons here. So, uh, what happened was I got hit by this from the Guards Armored. Now, in Phase 8, they're still pretty good at this, but they're not as good at it. The reason that they can still do it is that they've got access to things like the Stuart and the Cromwell 5. The problem with these tanks is that while both of them are superior on paper, um, in general sense, it's mostly better at tank-to-tank -tank combat. For example, the Cromwell 5 over here has actually less high explosive value than one of those SDKFZ half-tracks, and... Like, the AP value of 11 doesn't really matter in this phase because you're mostly going to be fighting extremely light vehicles, things with uh, an armor armor value of, like, 4 or something like that. For this reason, the Stuart is kind of better in some ways, but its high explosive value on its tank gun is really, really crap. It's only a 1. So you're never going to be able to really push through with that. What they have got, however, is also support Cromwells. The difference is that these guys cost 110 points. And this means that if your opponent's on the ball and manages to kill one of your Cromwell 6s, then you've lost a lot of points. And since they're not really that much more durable when you're talking about fighting an anti-tank emplacement, uh, these things can get wiped out pretty quickly and pretty easily by anti-tank guns. And if that happens, you're in a real bad day. Um, so the, the biggest reason I would say that the Allies are worse at the strategy is that this is, for example, well, this is a support vehicle, not a recon. If I wanted to go recons, I'd have to have the Humber Mark IV. And the Mark IV, while it's a good anti-tank vehicle, is not very good against infantry at all. And they've got the AEC Mark III, and the AEC Mark III, again, is good against other tanks. Um, so you could use this as your replacement for the Puma. It's more expensive than the Puma, in fact. 
but it's not really as good at the role of just rushing down and uh, trying to wipe out enemy anti-tank emplacements. And if it's dueling against German armor, uh, the German armor in the early game really has very, very light uh, armor, typically in Phase A, again with the exception of the Butte Firefly. So Phase A, German armor, you typically only really need to have an anti-tank gun with like an 8 or so, uh, or a 7 in this case would be fine. And that would be sufficient to fight most of the armor in Phase A. Uh, the 11 is just overkill, and you're paying a ton for it. So just not really as good at that strategy. So you're, you're reliant more on things like universal carriers and um, other machine gun arm vehicles. But the problem with those is that they're not really that tough if someone ends up just walking out at uh, you with like any sort of light vehicle with anti-tank capability. So you, you, people have been doing this. The reason is that if I do just go onto the field with a couple of Cromwell 5s, and a couple of the uh, Cromwell 6s. Like, a Cromwell 6 is perfectly capable of wiping out an SDKFZ half track. It doesn't matter that this is 13 high explosive and not AP. Um, a 13 high explosive shell is perfectly fine at killing one of those light vehicles. Um, so, you just really have to watch out for that sort of thing. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and take another look at another game and, and look at another alternative, I think, to uh, that sort of Axis style of play, and also what it looks like when the Allies do it, and why this is really not that great a strategy. Alright, so here we are, we're taking this on the other foot. You can see that I'm playing as the uh, SS Panzer here. Um, I was using the wrong faction, I should have actually been using the Panzer layer here as well. But we're up against the uh, 12th, uh, or the House Guards Armored, and um, they're going to be playing in the same sort of fashion. now. One of the things to remember about the SS Panzer is that uh, their deck doesn't really have anti-tank capability. I think I've got a total of two anti-tank guns in this entire deck, but they're really is, this really just shows like uh, if you're trying to win the early game with a Blitzkrieg type tactic, this is 19, this isn't 1930 goddamn nine. You cannot Blitzkrieg anymore as the Germans. That is not in their doctrine. Um, what you should be doing is armored counterattacks, and that is exactly what the SS Panzer are good at in this game. And hell, this is what the German armored decks in this game are good at in the first place. They're no longer on the offensive, they're now on the back foot. And these decks sort of epitomize that. I think that people sort of are still holding in, holding in their mind the sort of idea of that holy grail of a breakthrough. Uh, well, unfortunately for me, as the German player, that's no longer the reality. That is now the reality for the Allies. So you can see that my opponent has just got this, like, M5 half-track over here with, like, a unit of, I think, Bren gunner gunners or something like that in there. Uh, I don't really remember, and, like, yeah, this is not going to hold up if I push forward at all, but I'm going to be busy focusing elsewhere. So, yeah, I'm not even going to be thinking about pushing into there just yet. Now, what have I got over here? Well, i got one Kubel with a gun and, like, some crappy units over here. Uh, over here, I've got an SDKF Z250-9, which is a great support gun, a able to deal with a Humber Mark IV, kind of. Like, the Humber can also kill it pretty easily. It's a Humber Mark IV, so if it, like, gets the first shot off, it's going to easily kill me. Um, but we've also got, like, a Kubel with a command unit. We've also got these Kubel, or these Opal Blitzes and these SDKF Zs that have got uh, units with Panzer Shreks. And these are going to stop my opponent from moving forward very elegantly for quite some time now. Now, I do actually wish I had just boosted these guys into this house here on some level, but at the same time that probably would have just resulted in my unit getting blown apart by all the stuff coming down the road much, much, much earlier. Now my opponent seems to be assuming that I'm going to be using the same strategy, and this is what I was saying earlier. If you're using the rush forward with everything you've got in vehicles, uh, in, in a strong anti- uh, like he's got a bunch of these Cromwells here, he's got a mortar two-inch carrier here for Christ's sake, he's got bunches of Piet teams. This is designed specifically to hard counter somebody who's rushing forward with a ton of SDKF Zs. Um, and, like, yeah, he's taking out my half-track here. I don't really give a damn. That half-track wasn't going to do all that much against these types of units anyway. Panzer Grenadiers, I have to move them out of the sight line of this. Unfortunately, I move them a little bit too far, and they sort of end up popping out the other side and get smacked by these guys, but they're able to run away. That's just fine. This half track is going to start chasing them all across the map, and that's annoying. What's more annoying is these guys won't get into the stupid building, so, like, we're already off on the wrongest of feet here. But you can see, like, MMG carriers... M5 half track. These things are not as good as SDKFZ uh, Zs at destroying enemy uh, vehicles as they're sort of uh, moving forward, but they're good enough at the roll. Um, th this is sort of their equivalent. The only big problem with these guys is that they have no defense whatsoever against enemy motorized vehicles, so they can get screwed over by that. Now, my opponent is firing these things at the wrong targets. This is one of the sort of other 
disadvantages of the strategy is that you do have to make sure that you're firing at the right type of unit at the very least, but it's not really a huge deal. Over here, like, the, our pack 38 here has just been firing like crazy here at just whatever the hell. Um, and we're not hitting Jack Dick all, but that's fine. Uh, we're still at plus zero, plus zero, so that, like, that breakthrough that my opponent could have had is just has not quite materialized the way he probably had wanted it to. He just didn't find the concentration of forces here. Um, and since I have bailed out his 200 carrier uh, as well, finally managed to take out a vehicle there. Um, all, the, all this stuff together is just sort of wearing him down. Managed to take an, out another Cromwell, and this is what I was saying, like, he could have afforded to lose uh, a different type of vehicle, but uh, he couldn't afford to lose a Cromwell. And at this point in time, my opponent, like, is sort of showing some inexperience, because he should have really been pushing forward with all those half-tracks into the same area, uh, rather than what he did here, which is allow my Panzer Grenadiers to sort of um, find that half-track that was chasing. If he had them all, like, point and clicks attacking this Pack 38 well, actually, I just would have hidden it behind the tree line, but... Um, you know, suffice it to say, like, he had opportunities to do a little bit better with his units here. Uh, I think we managed to wipe out this uh, half-track here, but I can't... No, I, I, it gets out of line of sight before I can uh, actually kill it, but it was a good try. It was a good try. Either way, you can see, like, Piet teams and uh, motorized rifles sort of spreading out around the roads and stuff like that. And, again, this is really just for the purpose of stopping me from um, uh, getting forward with half-tracks and stuff like that. Another Piet team moving forward, these Panzer Grenadiers are able to move out into the open and uh, intercept this Piet team. And since the Panzer Grenadiers have those ridiculous double um, LMGs, they're able to knock those guys down pretty quickly. At this point in time, I'm actually just running back and forth with my Pack 38 here. And every time it sort of gets line of sight to a vehicle, it stops, turns to fire, and kills it. So it's doing a pretty good job there. But you can see, like, we're just pushing these guys back with sheer fire volume of firepower. But in he comes with a whole bunch of half tracks. He's realized that this uh, plan is not working. And uh, he, he's already invested in this front, like he knows that even if he reinforces, or he suspects even if he reinforces this front, he hasn't really got a leg to stand on here. So he's gonna just try and get the hell out of this uh, section here. Over here we were just sort of firing away at these motorized rifles, which, which have exited the tree line for some reason. Uh, just as this guy leaves, he could have actually used the combination of the uh, M5 half-track and the motorized rifles just to probably deal with my Panzer Grenadiers a little bit better. But um, suffice to say he doesn't. Forced to fall back with these Panzer Grenadiers, so on and so forth. But you can see that, like, this is where the Germans really shine, is where you're able to use a few Panzer Grenadiers to hold out large areas of land. Like, I've got, like, five Panzer Grenadiers on the map or something like that. But the amount of stuff they're able to hold back because of how ridiculous they are in this game um, really shines through. At this point in time, we're pushing forward with the Butte Firefly. Uh, I unfortunately didn't notice that uh, he had the six-pounder here. Um, with line of sight to me, but actually I don't think he's got line of sight to me just yet. But the Butte Firefly is just going to be firing away with some machine guns here primarily. It's just here to blunt all these half-track spam, um, because it's there's, there's no half-track that's going to be able to deal with it, um, obviously. Uh, but yeah, that six-pounder is capable of dealing with it at this kind of range in particular. Uh, I think I actually specifically target it at this point, but... Yeah, it was a bit of a waste of a, six, uh, a Butte Firefly, but... Still, it's, it's fine. So yeah, Germans, uh, despite what you might think otherwise, are actually a very much short-range faction. Uh, they do best when they're able to fight... Uh, or sorry, long-range faction. They're best able to fight back against their opponent if they're able to use their uh, double LMGs. Because at those sort of dif distances, I'm like twice as good as a motorized rifle in terms of uh, firepower, if not more. Um, unfortunately, I just barely explode just as we take out that... Uh, anti-tank gun, which really sucks, but uh, at this point in time, I've got a couple SDKFZ 250-9s on the field, so they're going to be able to deal some pretty good damage. And again, we just sort of walk back and forth with Pack 38, and it has done some serious work here. Uh, we're actually going to run out of ammunition with this Pack 38 during this game, which is something that never happens, but, uh, you know, whatever. Sometimes it does, I guess. It's able to get another shot through the gap there, take out that half-track, apparently. Getting some more Opal Blitzes with some uh, command squads and some infantry. So on and so forth. He keeps trying to push these uh, half-tracks in close so that he can take out my units that are sort of hiding in these bushes. It's risky to do that because here he gets Panzer Fausted and that goes down. Um, but you can see that again, like this single unit of Panzer Grenadier, nine-man squad now, only lost one man and it's uh, able to sort of fend off like four other units because as soon as they try to run through the open or something like that, they get wiped out. Now they have taken this building and once they secure that building, uh, he's in a much better spot than I am, so I am going to get forced back eventually. 
Uh, and you can see me sort of retreating my unit back here. Um, I think that I can't find quite a line to avoid line of fire, so I end up getting pinned down after retreat. That's fine, though. Uh, he can't really easily pursue, because the only ones that could are these motorized rifles here, and they're not in a great spot to try to run the gap, so... Motorized rifles over here as well. And again, like, we've got Panzer Grenadiers firing away at those double LMGs from this long distance here, firing away at these units. Motorized rifle over there, motorized rifle over there. And... Mixed with that half-track, we're dealing quite a lot of damage, actually, to them. Now, my opponent is running a plus one, but we're at the weakest phase that we could possibly be as the SS Panzer at this stage, and we're going to come back pretty damn hard. Uh, we do manage to lose uh, another one of those things to that six-pounder there. He's got two six-pounders now, sort of all trying to mash through this gap here. There's really not much there, but I have pushed forward the BF Panzer II for no particularly good reason. I think I just needed the command radius, but uh, that's fine. We've managed to sort of support our units. We've actually got like three different units over here now. He's trying to push forward with a Piet team to take out this uh, SDKFZ because he's got no real answer over here for this SDKFZ that's been hounding him for like minutes and is going to run out of ammunition anyway, so who the hell cares sort of thing. Um, but yeah, that uh, six-pounder is going to be able to fire away at my uh, Panzer II, so who cares, it's a 55-point Panzer II. I think he does take it out there, yeah. Hits it right in the ammo. Piet team forced to fall back there. The six-pounder up here is going to be forced to fall back very soon as well. I don't really know why it's taking so long for these guys to recover, but I suspect they're actually getting shot somehow. I'm not really sure how he could possibly have line of sight to this unit, though, through the trees. So it's a little bit strange that that's happening. I think I end up having to retreat it, um, since I don't want to get captured, although I have got a Panzergrenfuhrer over here, so it's not like I really have to. So at this point, you can see, like, even just this one unit of lone Panzergrens out in the open are able to sort of stop this Bren group from really advancing well. And the Bren group is so pitiful that I'm able to just sort of take their fire and walk into a house, so it didn't really matter anyway. At this point in time, uh, sort of Panzergrens uh, being pushed back, pinned down again. Fortunately, I'm able to get some shots with this SDKFZ 250-9 uh, here from a pretty good angle. It's going to be able to actually pound these guys pretty hard. And, like, he's run out of ammunition on a lot of these units. Panzergrundfuhrer is not really that great at fighting, so I should probably move it back just a little bit. But Here at this point in time, I just brought up three of these SDKFZ 250-9s. This is the stage of the game where I need to get ready for a push into uh, my opponent because it's now Phase B. And I've opted that I'm not going to bring my Tiger or uh, E into this sort of Hellstorm. Um, instead, I've just brought three of these cheaper SDKFZ 250-9s. Now, I don't use the strategy as sort of cheese like a lot of players do, like my opponent was basically trying to do, where you just rush forward at the beginning. Um, but I am willing to use this once I know where my opponent's hard points are to sort of take them down. And you can see that my opponents here lost the six-pounder pretty badly because of all the concentrated fire. And even if he kills one or two of my SDKFZs, I don't really give a crap. And all I did was transmission damage one of them, so it wouldn't have even mattered anyway. Um, at this point in time, though, uh, he's got, like, a brand group and a motor motorized rifle leader heading on in, uh, but I'm going to be able to sort of fight all this stuff with my uh, SDKFZ 250-9. He's trying to push the gap here um, through all this uh, fire and stuff like that uh, into my SDKFZ 250-9. Unfortunately for him, these units can't really do anything about this and also can't do anything about the fire from that uh, this uh, Panzer Grenadier, so he just gets shot up on pretty badly. Uh, I make sure to shift my fire to the uh, six-pounder over here, and it's actually going to go down before it can actually take out my STKFZ 250-9. Um, so it just gets wiped. I don't really even have to worry about it. Uh, I think it might have fired, but it, it I, I'm not entirely sure, because it certainly didn't look like it fired. Like, my morale looks like it had fired, but... Uh, I, at this point in time, I know that my opponent has lost a bunch of anti-tank guns, though, um, and I am actually going to push up with the Tiger E. Uh, the two-star Tiger E, 15, uh, 15 armor penetration, 12 armor, going to be able to easily take out Cromwell 7s and a Cromwell 5. Like, there's nothing that these guys can do against the armor that I can put out at this point in the game. And this is where the push starts to reverse, and this is typically speaking where Germany is at their strongest. Um, Pushing forward with the Panzer Grenadier, this is a mistake um, in, in, in hindsight, but I just had him on attack move and didn't think he'd actually be able to push this far forward before he started firing, so... Um, although we actually did manage to kill that unit there, so I'm kind of surprised by that. Um, but yeah, I think we do lose this Panzer Grenadier unit to this motorized rifle over here. Maybe not, maybe it's the half-track. 
Although we should be able to kill the half track. I've got uh, Panzerfausts. Yeah. Okay, never mind. I actually killed everything there. Okay, whatever. Uh, I don't remember how slash when I lose this unit. I think I do, but maybe I don't. Uh, over here, uh, we are losing our heroic uh, pack 38 here. It's going to actually escape with uh, escape with like one person. I'm actually bringing up ammo for my pack because why the hell not at this point? Um, Hero of the Soviet Union, the pack 38, except it's uh, totally not Hero of the Soviet Union. Um, Tiger managed to find its mark on a first shot. Just fires across, kills a kills a fairly important vehicle for him to not let kill. <laughs> for him to not let me kill. Um, at this point, like, this guy is trying to come across this gap over here, be a little bit clever, earn him some space on the side. Unfortunately for him, he gets one shot by the Tiger, and the Tiger E is just going to start being a monster. It is going to be like a Tiger running rampant. Um, so phase B, I've brought in some Pioneers. Pioneers are cheap and plentiful in the Panzer decks, and once you've got these guys on the go, then Rid realistically there's nothing that your opponent can do to stop you because you've got that combination of being able to storm a city with the pioneers and if you're sort of storming forward with the pioneers and your opponent is trying to stop you using um, infantry then that infantry gets opened up upon by the tigers and the panthers and stuff like that all of who have very high high explosive damage um, and then you just crap all over them basically so yeah at this point our, our pack is like at zero ammo <laughs> Um, I've never actually seen a pack get down to zero ammo before, so, uh, you know, that's interesting. I think it does have a kill tally of, like, 15 vehicles at the end of this game. Um, we are getting some vehicles sneaking up on the back of my SDKF Z250-9, and it's out of the, um, explosive there, so it's just firing away with this machine gun. It's actually got a crap ton of ex uh, machine gun ammo, but it doesn't really matter in this particular case. So yeah, we're just pushing forward with some Panzer Grenadiers so that my Tiger E doesn't walk into a Piet. From those motorized rifles and uh, we've actually got these SDKF Zs and stuff like that as well all uh, charging forward just a little bit and unfortunately we're again out of uh, machine gun or anything other than machine gun ammo we can see that there's motorized rifles over here so I just need to actually make sure that I'm not pushing forward into the town with the uh, Tiger E but this part of the road is actually perfectly fine he's like trying to choke the road with as much of the motorized rifles as he possibly can you can see that he's just losing tons and tons of stuff as it's trying to push forward. Bedford coming in with an anti-tank gun. I think he might lose the Bedford, actually. Yeah, with the anti-tank gun, which is very, very vital. Um, it's the only thing he's got that could potentially try and fight against my uh, Tiger here. Um, Tiger is sort of backing away because I saw there might be motorized rifles heading in. Um, and this motorized rifle leader now is just going to get opened up on by my uh, vehicles all firing crossfire into it. These guys are already pinned down, so even if they stop being pinned down for just a second... Um, we'll be able to get back on, onto them for pretty quickly, walking some pioneers into the area as well. Like, these main gunshots are what's really sort of doing the, uh, the work here. So yeah, motorized rifles in this, uh, rifle leader here, just in trouble. Um, M5 half-track is able to sort of, M half-tracks are able to take out one of my units of Panzer Grenadiers, that was down to one man. Um, but they're going to start running forward into this uh, Panzergrain unit, and they've still got three Panzerfausts, so... Uh, transmission damage on one of them, the other one I think walks too far forward and ends up getting hit by... Actually, I don't know what that got hit by. I think that got hit by the Pack 38 which has killed everything. I think that I end the game with it, but I can't remember for sure. Opel Blitz moving forward to resupply our SDK of Z 250-9s. Now the Piats are great if I'm charging forward, that sort of quick charge into the enemy line sort of thing, uh, like what my opponents were trying to do, but Piats don't work if I'm staying at distance and know the ranges of those Piats and keeping my vehicles away from that building line there. So yeah, we're able to get the ammunition back on these SDK of Z 250-9s, and that's going to make our vehicles way, way more deadly. Into my opponent comes with the Typhoon AT, trying to kill my Tiger. You're never going to kill a Tiger with a uh, Typhoon AT. Uh, like, even I found, like, trying to fight, fire at, find their rear armor, you're not going to kill them. So, it's just one of those asymmetric things in this game where I kind of wish they would change it, actually. Because the, um, the AT for the Germans is ridiculously good, the uh, flying AT. Ooh, that uh, guy got hit by the AT shell from, or the, the shell from the Panther. Um, at this point in time, we got a Panz uh, uh, Tiger E and a Panther D coming onto the field here. We got two SDKF Zeds. Um, 
One was transmission damage, albeit, but uh, we're able to just continually put down this sort of fire to my opponent there. We got spy troops uh, helping us pound away at these motorized rifles, and we're sort of whittling down my opponent's forces from range here. Because, like I said, Germans are better off at long range compared to the Allies, who are better at sort of close range, typically. It even applies to things like these motorized rifles over here. Like, um, they're less incompetent uh, by comparison to my guys. Like, my guys have this 9 explosive damage uh, at long range. Whereas these motorized rifles over here have got two um, at long range. So I'm almost five times better than their unit at long range. Um, whereas if he fights me at close range, he's got access to the uh, Sten guns and he's got access to the Lee Enfield. Both of which kind of close the gap a little bit. Like uh, since I've got the same high explosive there and uh, less there. Uh, he kind of closes the gap just a little bit. And if I, if I have to pay twice or more uh, to get a Panzer Grenadier unit compared to motorized rifles, which I don't think is actually the case. I think I'm only paying 30% um, more, 33% more than, you know, my opponent's actually got a pretty good deal on that still. But uh, my units still at long range are still going to be like five times better. So if I can keep at that long range, then I'm, I'm just going to win. These guys, on the other hand, get, there's no good range against these guys. Like the long range high explosive value on these guys is still twice as good. They only cost the same amount. Um, if you get in closer, then the high explosive value on their uh, MP40s is actually really high. Then, they, of course, they've also got the uh, rifles, which are crappy, but they've also got the frag grenades. So that combination just makes it really hard to deal with. Did I lose an STKFZ? I think I lost one of my STKFZs. I think I walked into a pit or something stupid. I probably walked into a pit or something stupid. Look at this guy just like, I'm not afraid anymore. Ah! And then 9 million bullets fail to kill him. And then he finally dies. There we go. I bet the spy troop killed him or something retarded like that. Alright. Incoming mortar fire coming in on the spy troops, which is a little bit unfortunate. But you can see that my opponent's just trying to stem the tide of, like, ridiculousness that is this push. Um, I could be pushing elsewhere, but, like, I've really got no need to. Um, if I can crush the axis of advance of my opponent and destroy all of his units with a minimum of losses on my side, then there's really not much that can happen to actually make this um, go in his favor. And I'm already getting a ticking plus two. I don't need more than that to win this game, so that's perfectly fine by me. Um, I think that we're just going to keep advancing along this, uh, straight into my opponent's troops. There's no reason, he, my opponent has not given me a reason not to. Um, and since we're up against Guards Armored, he doesn't really have any units in the late game that answer me if he's been losing his, uh, anti-tank guns. Um, Tiger is still sitting in a good position for this sort of crap. Uh, Panther is firing at a command car, and somehow the command car survives, which is really sad, but, um... Yeah, you can see just the sheer amount of anti-tank that my opponent is forced to bring forward there. Finally got that ammo explosion that we were looking for. Um, and we're just bringing up some of our own troops here at this point in time. We're going to spread around to the left a little bit, hook, uh, hook out to the left there a bit. And at this point in time, I think I end up getting a, a uh, rocket uh, aircraft to take out these mortars or something like that. But it's really not, it's kind of superfluous. I don't really care too much about that. Now, I'm not pushing forward that aggressively with the tanks. Again, the Age of Blitzkrieg is over. It has been over for a long time by 1944, and there are doctrinal and practical reasons why I should not be charging my tanks forward in a glorious rush across uh, Poland or whatever the hell. Um, it just does not work. So yeah, we've brought in our... Uh, I forget what airplane I'm actually using for this. It's uh, ME 109s, so it's like all ME 109s, and uh, they're just going to come in, rocket and rocket one of the artillery pieces, and get out. Um, easy in, easy out, sort of thing. And at this point in time, like I'm just rushing forward with like all pioneers, and my opponent is still forced to bring in tons and tons and tons of motorized rifles. The reason my opponent is forced to bring in tons and tons of motorized rifles, well, he needs to have the ability to fight back against armored vehicles, and if he is bringing a whole crap ton of uh, assault troops then he's completely fucked because you can't fight against um, tanks with assault troops because they don't have anti-tank weapons unless you're uh, SS Sturmtruppen, um, in which case, yeah, you can in that case, but, uh, you know, it's rare. I think I, uh, like, walk my hero Pack 38 into the middle of combat and it dies, which is really sad and really silly, but it happened. It had, it was going to, it was bound to happen eventually. Anarchy, Chaos, Bloodshed over here, uh, MG42 able to like lean in on them pretty hard. A whole bunch of their stuff getting exploded here as uh, time goes on. I've got another half-track over here, but um, just trying to sort of push forward a little bit into these bush lines here. 
And we've got lots and lots of high explosive shot being fired away that uh, is dealing some pretty hefty damage. He's trying to advance to these Universal Carriers as well, as well as a Crusader AA, but a Crusader AA is not a great idea at this point in time because of how many tanks there are. I think this Panther D gets a little bit too close, but I think I actually still managed to get it out alive here. You can see a Piet team just like rushing it. I did manage to uh, get these guys to fall back though, which is uh, all I really needed. But yeah, like Piet comes up. Yeah, bounces front of the Panther D here. These guys get immediately exploded by something. Uh, there's so many Piets in the region though that it's just risky for me to have a Panther up that close anyway. So, even though another one bounced, even though I don't think those are supposed to bounce against the Panther, um, you know, it's still not a great day for me, <laughs> for my Panther, so they're gonna back out of here slowly. I think we see another shot from that Piat, but it's uh, too late by that point in time. Another bounce, actually. Yeah, so Panther D. Not even the best armored Panther model, so... Pretty good there. Pan Tiger E over here, just, uh... Been laying down the fire support, and it's been doing a really great job of that. Typhoon AT coming in again. It's gonna wipe out my Panzer II. Um, and I did need that for the command radius, which is a bit of a shame, but, uh, oh well. At this point in time, my opponent actually gets motorized rifles up to this hedge line here, and that actually makes it really hard for me to dis uh, move him out of there, because he can actually see the pioneers from a fairly decent distance over the light cover, uh, which makes it a lot harder for me to actually push pioneers forward. Um, I'm not actually using my grenades to the best of their ability, really, but this has forced me to move back with my like um, my stuff here. I actually get a good shot in uh, that building with the, uh, the uh, ME-109. And here I think we lose the pack, but oh well. You've done good pack. You can rest now. You can go home. You're back. You can go back to the the fatherland. So yeah, we're able to get some shots at the ME109s, but uh, these pioneers get absolutely wrecked by just everything. Basically, uh, that Sherman Mark V there is really really good um, at dealing with infantry. Like, what's the total high explosive value on this thing? It's like almost 20, so yeah, it's going to be capable of uh, dealing some damage to infantry there. Unfortunately for it, it has walked into the lines of uh, fire of a Panther D here, and the Panther D and the Panzer IV are both capable of wiping it out really, really easily. Coming in with the Firefly as well, at a bad angle, the Firefly needs to be sort of at the 1200 range, or it has to be ambushing. So the fact that it's sort of walking down a road uh, straight towards a Panther and a Panther D and a Panzer IV is just not really great for it, because the Panther IV can actually kill it in these conditions. It's usually faster to fire. Unfortunately for it, it gets ki <laughs> killed by this random ass shot from like the Tiger E through a gap that I did not think was possible. And uh, at this point in time, the Tiger E is just still cleaning house, still killing everything. These guys are pinned down, and I'm able to sort of push forward with some infantry because of this. Motorized rifles back here. If this is what kills my Tiger E, I'm going to be really upset by that. Although these guys look like they're almost out of Piets. Yeah, they got one Piet left. I think there's a storm outside. That's interesting. Yeah, I think this motorized rifle actually might do a Hail Mary, kill my my Tiger E here. Rip in peace. Rip in peace. Lyric. What a terrible name, Lyric. Actually, no, I think I got sight of this guy. Yeah, okay, so these guys are pinned down again, so... Oh, no, here, here it comes. No, tiger! Okay, no, yeah, we get out of there. Finally kill those guys in the woods, and this gives us the ability to push back into this territory here, and in particular, like, I get a panther into this uh, tree line here, making it impossible for him to retake this area. Um, so that's sort of what we're going to be doing there. Opponents sort of trying to push forward with motorized rifles over an open field, and every time they sort of move a little bit, they get pinned down again. Um, nothing really wrong with that, because I'm not really going to be able to kill them that quickly or efficiently, so it's just keeping my units busy, stopping me from pushing them elsewhere. Another half-track goes down, but yeah, like, at this point in time, what the hell are you supposed to be doing? Like, late-game Germany is ridiculous in this game, and my opponent really should have just been, um pushing much more methodically and carefully in phase A, instead of uh, doing the sort of head-on-head -head collision uh, of, of throwing all of his units into the fray there. Now, admittedly, that's pretty much all you can do against the Axis, and this is why it's so strange to me the way that people are playing them, because Axis don't play well clumped up like this. Um, 
if they just have a bunch of those SDKFZs, you can just take them out uh, with a whole bunch of uh, random ass infantry um, and a bunch of like anti tank emplacements and stuff like that. It's not really that difficult um, to counter it. But if you're playing against um, a guy that's playing as Dermy and is kind of spread out and is simply playing, preserving his forces for phase B, then you're just wrecked. You can't do jack dick all against Panthers. Uh, Panther D over here. I'm just not moving forward with my Panthers here. They're just sitting in the woods here. Anytime a unit opens fire, they get just completely friggin' wrecked here by other units. So it's not like I give a crap that my Pioneers are getting shredded. Pioneers are a secondary unit. They're unimportant. They're cheap. I can bring in more. Um, I think this deck has 12 of the damn things. Opponents brought in a 25 pound gun. I'm just gonna actually kill that with um, an airstrike or something like that. He's also got a 17 pounder here. The 17 pounder is kind of weird. It's not actually that reliable at killing things like tigers. Uh, just because they're so slow to move and slow, so slow to re-aim uh, and so slow to fire. That you quite often find them actually getting killed by things like panthers. But um, that's not guaranteed. It's just it's more often than not I find. Um, able to get a suppression there and uh, pin down that... Uh, 25 pounder. We actually killed somehow the scout car that was like blocking for the 17 pounder, unfortunately, but. Because I was aiming at the 17 pounder in that particular volley, but. Getting some shots on some, some scouts, getting hit by some flak from that Crusader AA Mark 1. Um, all well and good there, because we're able to sort of push forward in a concentration here. And this is actually a bad place for me to be if my opponent had good. Uh, good units positioned in defenses uh, that were not busy falling back. He could actually deal a lot of damage to me there. It will take out one of those units over there, leaving just the scouts and they're pinned down. And then we've got this Crusader Mark A, uh, Crusader A Mark 1. Firing away again with our uh, Tiger here. Here, It's just basically being a complete asshole. Uh, the 25 pounder actually could kill my Tiger from this range though, so I have to be a little bit careful. Um, and I think we actually just sort of bounced some shots from like uh, some pretty impressive stuff here. Um, able to push forward though with our panther, and uh, in comes the firefly, which is actually I think what I, I get killed by with the tiger. I have another tiger that I bring in though, so it's not like as though I can remember which tiger is which. Yeah, so we've lost our tiger here at this point. Real sad day, um, but we, we've got another that we can bring in. We've got a bunch of panzer, panzer fours that are just sort of lo loitering around being useless assholes. I'm just sort of waiting for my opponent to try and push something into their line of sight or whatever, because I don't actually have to push forward at all, we're ticking a plus three. Uh, total victory in four minutes, um, which is before the turn timer actually ends here. Uh, another Sherman 5 coming in, Firefly pushing forward, pushing straight into a Panther G. I think he actually duels my Panther D G and kills it here, uh, because I should not be pushing forward when my Panther G is this close to panicking. But, managed to turn and get the shot, he manages to get the shot, he manages to get, I think, this next shot before I can get mine, and he kills me, I think. Nope, falling back there, and then the AT comes in. That's not going to do dick against a tank. Panther AT, I th maybe he kills it here, I can't really remember for sure. Either way, we've got a line of sight uh, to the 17-pounder. We're going to be able to kill it with the LMG there. Um, anyway, we're bringing across our other Panther D here, which is a bit risky, but he's not going to be in line of sight long enough for him to actually fire at it. Um, so we're going to be able to get our side armor turned away and then back uh, towards him with our front armor. Just move in with another fresh Panther D that is not panicking. And we're going to be able to turn in get the shot here. Um, he managed to kill my uh, eight, my machine gun, but who really cares. Uh, and we're able to start to mowing down Crusader AAs with our uh, Panther. Um, he has got more tanks, Sherman 5s, but Sherman 5s basically can't kill a Panther. So At this point, we've uh, moved some SDKF Zeds over towards these M5 half-tracks. Deal with that a little bit. Deal with that... Uh, 25 pounder. Can't believe we bounced a shot on a Cromwell. But uh, yeah, at this point, my opponent surrenders. So I actually want to see how many tanks we killed with that uh, one anti tank gun there. Uh, so I guess it would be under losses. Okay, so it killed a, an M5 half track, a Humber, a Cromwell 5, a 2 inch carrier, an MMG carrier, M5 half track, an M5 half track, a 2 inch carrier, an M5 half track. Um, MMG carrier, an M5 half track, an M5 half track, the Crusader AA. Uh, this is like 15 units. So, um, we've also got like our Tiger E uh, here killed a million units, and then we've also got like our Panther D here that killed a whole bunch of units. Um, so yeah, th this is sort of what ends up happening with Germany. Now, not not admittedly this. This is 
heavily anomalous, um, but you can't really fight late game German armor. So if I'm just digging in and stopping him from getting like a plus two or a plus three and pushing back by phase B, then I'm going to be fine. I don't need to win the game by going in after him at point at phase A. I don't need to rush him. That's not where my strength is as the Germans. So I think that a lot of people are going to do a lot better as Germany if they sort of adopt the mentality of, of um, using the strengths of their deck instead of this weird street cheese threat. And I think they're also going to be able to beat these allied decks a lot more elegantly because there, there are some problems against um, the German armor rush if you're using the allied counter armor rush. Because mostly speaking, um, if they've got that Cromwell out there and they kill your Puma um, in the 1v1, and uh, then you're you're just you're just dead. Uh, uh, there's nothing else about it. You're just you're just gonna get fucking wrecked at that point in time. So they can actually just win the game off of that because after that, um, all he has to do is keep backing off, and as soon as his vehicle's not really panicking anymore, just fire and kill another vehicle. Fire, kill another vehicle sort of thing, and your shots are all going to bounce even if you panic his vehicle, you can't really kill it um, with um, the lighter SDKFZ, so you need something like a Puma uh, to do it, but um, even then uh, I don't know, like maybe if you swarm it fast enough, you could get around its flanks and kill its side armor, but that doesn't really work that well in this game, and you probably lose too many half-tracks for the points value um, but yeah, I just don't think that's a really viable strategy rushing in this game in that sort of way. Anyway, hope you found this one enjoyable, and of course, as always, hope to see you guys all next time.